it is a week of sadness. Very sad week this week. Uh, as always, I'm here with Mr. Raven Bones. What's up? So before we get into the sadness, um, let's talk about some good news. So some good news is da 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 drum roll please. So the reason why I sent you that photo, Raven, is because Instagram is freeing the nipple. Woo! However, they're taking it in a very weird approach. So, um, what they're doing is they're freeing the nipple, right? <clears throat> But yeah. they're only freeing the nipple for transgender people. So first off, I don't know how that's going to work. And second off, um, so basically, if you're a woman and you turn into a man, you can basically, like, show your tits. So I can already see it now. There's going to be a bunch of those porn bots just being like, I'm actually a man. But, uh -huh. but, yeah. but Instagram said, the reason why this is still good news is because Instagram said um, that if this is successful, so first off, they're changing the um, age to 18 plus now on Instagram. So it was originally 13 plus, but after this new update that's coming out, it's going to be 18 plus. Um, so only adults are going to be on the platform now. And I mean, uh, that's going to mess shit up for Instagram because I know they're kind of, they have a lot of like uh, teenagers, but I think this is honestly a step in the right direction because they said once, uh, once this new update goes out, depending on, um, how how successful it is they might completely just free the nipple entirely so all women anybody fucking show some tits it'll be kind of like um japan where like tits are like you know are, are like not censored but like dicks and other shit is censored yeah so that's where instagram's going uh facebook said they're gonna stay completely uh 13 plus so they're not gonna free the nipple there so um if you're a uh, grandma using facebook you won't have to worry about seeing some big ass boobies on your uh, feed now <clears throat> yeah that was yeah no raven you're not a social media user other than twitter uh aside from twitter and then what i do for snapchat because friends force me no i'm not i'm not really a social media user so this doesn't really affect you but um for me no. this 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 is pretty pretty significant because um it's showing that meta or fucking facebook basically is willing to have is willing to make instagram an actual competitor to twitter because that was one of the only things i was really holding instagram back there was two things i was holding instagram back Number one, it was a platform for children and well, platform for people under the age of 18 and two, it didn't have any good web browser support. Well, recently they made it so it has really good web browser support. So now the web browser kind of looks like a like it, it fits to the screen. It has the feed exactly how it would should be on like a browser, like when you're looking at Twitter, same thing. And now with this, they're going to it's going to be a real competitor to Twitter. That's I think their goal is. I think they're trying to, I think they want to keep Facebook, you know, the social connection bullshit, but they're trying to make Instagram the, like, competitor to Twitter. I wouldn't be surprised in the next couple months, or at least before the end of the year, if um, they decide to add, like, something where you can just post messages rather than photos on Instagram. Kind of like Twitter as well. Because I think Meta sees the opportunity for people who don't want to be on Twitter anymore. And, you know, maybe they could persuade some of those people to, you know, jump ship, hop over, hop over the fence, cross the border legally. Yeah, but I feel like that ruins what Instagram uh, is supposed to be. It, I, I it's mean, literally in the name, yeah. Instagram. It's, yeah. like it's supposed to be about that quick photo. Yeah. And, and yeah, I think the thing is, though, you got to remember is social media has changed a lot than when Instagram started. When Instagram started, you know, Tumblr was still massive, fucking, all that shit was still massive, where, like, you post a photo, like, every day, you know, and it would just be posting photos of your life. But now people no longer want to post photos of their lives, because somehow we've become even more socially in invert, or, uh, I don't even know, like, inept. Introverted. Yeah, in yeah, introverted, to the point where we can't even post pictures of our lives, because we, quote-unquote, don't want people to see what we're doing. Um... 
Which, I mean, you know what, is a step in the right direction, because when people would post shit about their lives, like, all the time, um, you know, that was really easy to stalk people. But still, at the same time, I think the way social media is heading is now people just want a place to connect rather than have to post a photo to connect. Because, I mean, you can talk through DMs and all that stuff. I mean, I've used Instagram DMs for years, but I've never, like, you know... I, 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 the only time I post photos is usually of my golf shit or if, like, something major happens. Uh, however, like, during, um, here, what was it? I can pull it up. I, I pull, during New Year's, I posted a photo of my outfit, and the caption read, um, it said, New Year's fit so fire, even the devil had the stuff outside. And then I posted, um, one when I got my senior photos last year and that one said motherfuckers think they the shit they even farted yet that one was a pretty fire one and then i reused that one recently as well on 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 a bunch of photos i used and then the next one said um everyone told me i changed yeah i changed my pants i pooped my pants so i would say i would say i got a pretty fire instagram but like i uh i don't post that much So, I mean, but, but social media, like 13 years ago when Instagram started, social media was exactly what it was. It was a social media. You posted a photo, said, Hey, I'm at this coffee shop. And then five hours later, you'd post again. You'd be like, Hey, Uh now I'm at home. Now you'd be lucky if somebody posts once a a month, like me, if I post three times a year, (laughs) like I remember when I first started using Instagram, hell, even in 2015, um, Instagram was way different. You would click on somebody's account and you wouldn't get like all this extra bullshit where it would tell you like their bio or, you know, their name or anything like, I mean, it'd tell you their name. It'd be like, this is, let's say, you know, let's say this is Jason and he is from Minnesota, you know, something like that. And then, and then instead of having like all this stuff where you could see all, all like the stuff they posted, it would just go in order of most recent posts to oldest posts. And you would just scroll down this big list. Well, they got rid of that and changed it to, so now you just have, like, this catalog of, of, of lists, you know, of all your photos and all the things you're, you're in and tagged in. And it's just kind of like, it's, it's no longer how it used to be. And Facebook's the same way. That's why Facebook is dying, because Facebook is like a, you know, it's like a message board, but it's so, like, it, it's so ancient, as in, like, not ancient as in, like, it's super old, but, like, they just haven't updated the, the format of it that... It just is, it's, it's the only reason old people still use it. Like, I don't know anybody under the age of 30 that uses Facebook every single day. Like, like posts on it, messages, you know, finds all shit like that. I I don't see. Yeah, that's true. That's true. There's not a lot of people who do. Everybody just uses Twitter or Instagram. Because I mean, essentially Twitter. Yeah, and Snapchat. And essentially Twitter is just a better facebook i mean essentially just facebook with boobs Mm -hmm. so you know i'm gonna be honest i'm surprised it took them this long to kind of do this kind of change because you know because of the way society is going with trans people and and stuff i'm surprised that they didn't make this rule sooner because like if a woman transforms into a man goes through the surgery has their boobs you know reduced removed and made to look like a man's chest and and they're promoting themselves as a man then they should be able to post their bare chest like a man so it's kind of weird that they didn't do this before now yeah um and also well instagram used to have this thing um so it wouldn't it wouldn't even allow you to post like um like boobs at all so there was this girl that i knew my friend arlo i don't want to just completely like you know like uh talk like i I don't want to talk about this a lot but my friend arlo his sister um when she was 19 had um she had some something wrong with her uh left boob or something like that and so she had to get the nipple removed from it and so she posted a picture of her like without the uh without the nipple like her bare boob but there was no nipple and um they got she got basically like uh deplatformed like they they got rid of her account well then they made a change to the updated policy so now you can show boobs but is you just can't show nipple 
So, like, now you can post more uh, revealing bikini pics and stuff like that. Because, you know, sex sells, baby. So then, um, so then she got her account back. But before, Instagram used to be super strict on that. Like, it was like, you, if you even, like, posted a bikini pic, you would get a warning. And now, like, uh, and now you can, you're, you're finally going to be able to just say, tits out, baby. Woo! Woo! Tits! <clears throat> tits are pretty fire, though, let's be honest. Yeah, they are. I guess I wouldn't mind scrolling through my feed and then seeing a meme, and then all of a sudden the next post is seeing some fucking tits. I guess that's fine. That's basically what my Twitter is. Basically, if it isn't a meme, then it's just either boobs or art. <laughs> that's my Twitter. And then the occasional... For some reason, I do not follow Elon Musk, but he pops up on my home feed every single day, and I can't... I, I don't... I can't deal with it. It's so annoying. He is inevitable. You will he, accept. Yeah. He is inevitable, dude. He's like Thanos. Uh, yeah. But, but other good news this week is I started going... Um, I started getting back into my gym routine now that I'm um, getting closer to the golf season for me, and I'm going to transfer nice, schools. getting ripped. Yep, I'm getting ripped. I go every other day, and then I do yoga on the days I do not go because I have to for body yoga. rotation. Well, okay, so yoga, uh, golfers have to do yoga because they have to get, um, they have to get this body rotational and they have to be able to stretch, um, super far because you have to stretch back on your swing and the farther you can stretch back and the farther, like basically the more loose your muscles are and the, in, in the stronger you are as well. Like, so you kind of have that b mixed balance, you know, cause you don't want to get super ripped because then you're not going to be able to flex as much like then rotation. you're not limber. Yeah. Then you're not going to be nice and nice and perfect for being able to rotate all the way around. But if you are uh, doing yoga and then you do low weights, high reps, you know, you just tone your body. You can, as long as you're staying around like 200 pounds for my size, because I'm 6'2", uh, as long as you stay around like 200 to 190, which I'm 205 right now, um, as long as you stay around that, just kind of build your muscle up, do more yoga, you're going to be able to absolutely crush the ball, which is exactly what you need. Now, crushing the ball doesn't immediately make you a good golfer, because I know guys who can hit the ball 280 yards. Um, and they're trash because you know you still have to work on all the other parts of your game so so i gotta focus on just staying you know nice and nice and lean i gotta just stay lean but yeah that's lean so, like beef bro yeah so i've also i also haven't had fast food in about a week and a half like real fast food i guess i technically had subway but to me i mean that's fast food but to me like subway is like the healthiest fast food you could possibly have yeah, I mean, yeah, it's, it's just fast bread. food, but it's not. It's just carbs. Like that's all you get from Subway's. You just get carbs because you get a loaf of bread, basically. It's fast food, but like not as fast food as fast food could be. Yeah, like McDonald's. We should do a fast food tier list. I was thinking. About oh my that. god. Maybe that's <laughs> we, what we should, should do. Dude. Maybe we should do that for the other episode because I was looking on Twitter and I saw somebody post their fast food tier list and I was like, okay, this is trash, bro. Arby's in A. Okay, dude. Get that okay, shit out of here. Okay, dude. Bro, the last time I had Arby's, I'm not even kidding. The last time I had Arby's, I got a roast beef from there, and then I had a ham and cheese, and I threw up. Okay? I threw up. I haven't thrown you up. You threw up? From fast food. I don't normally throw up from shit. Like, I'm a hog. I can usually eat shit, and I do just fine. Like, Burger King, McDonald's, Jack in the Box, fucking Chick-fil-A, Subway pizza, anything, dude. I I usually can eat it without just absolutely having to either shit my pants or like um or throw up and I actually threw up eating Arby's. However, Arby's did have something that was really good. They still do. They have sliders. Those sliders are really good. They're at happy hour. You can get sliders for a buck. It might be two dollars now, but it was a buck like like seven years ago. But they used to have like five years ago. They used to have like a, a an orange. You know orange creamsicles like those orange cream bars. You know. The yeah. ice cream. They used to have a shake. It was called Orange Creamsicle Shake. And it was so fucking good, dude. It was almost as good as a shamrock shake from McDonald's. And McDonald's for me, like, I normally don't go to McDonald's unless, like, unless I get, like, a massive deal on the app. Like, when the Vikings won two weeks ago and got into the playoffs, uh, they, they did a free Big Mac for the Vikings, and it was pretty fire. So I did that. But Arl's, the only time I ever get excited for McDonald's is when the Shamrock Shake comes in March. That shit goes 
fucking nuts. I fucking love the Shamrock Shake, dude. Uh, I I haven't had it in a while, but when I did, I can agree it is pretty bomb. Well, it's like it's like mint, but it's like not like heavy mint. It's like the Andes mints. Like you've ever had those chocolate mints, you know? The, yeah. Yeah, it kind of tastes like that, and it's so good, dude. It's so fucking good. But no, I haven't had like real fast food in like two weeks, so it, I I've been I've been sticking pretty good. I've also been saving a bunch of fucking money too. Oh yeah, I've been doing that too. It's actually nice to save up money. Yeah, it is. Well, I mean, I save money. I just I'm saving a lot more now that I don't uh, eat a bunch of fast food. So I use my fast food money normally that I use to buy food and shit like that, and I pre-ordered Hogwarts Legacy. Ooh yeah, I'm excited for that game. Yeah, I I'm, I, I'm not a Harry Potter person, but. Yeah, like, I, I, I dabble in Harry Potter. I've watched all the movies. I've watched all the Fantastic Beast movies, although the only Fantastic Beast is kind of mid. Um, but the the game looks phenomenal. I like the I like the idea of it being an open, like, an open world game where you're a wizard. Like, that's fucking sick. Mm-hmm. It's like, dude. Yeah, that's gonna, it's gonna be great. And there's a lot of, there's a lot of good games and a lot of good movies coming out this year, too, dude. Holy fucking moly, dude. Oh my lordy lord. It is... Uh, I sent you that list of movies that are coming out this year, but there's also a massive amount of games that are coming out this year, too. And, first off, I believe it, Atomic Heart is dropping this year, too, isn't it, huh? Oh, yeah, they put out their uh, their final release. Uh, when is that thing. dropping? Uh, I believe next month. Really? Already? Already in February? So next month is uh, going to be pretty I'm gonna big. Double check. Next month will be pretty big then because we'll have Atomic Heart, Hogwarts Legacy, and then Jedi Survivors comes out just about a month after that. Um, and then the Suicide Squad game drops too. And then um, the Horizon Forbidden West DLC drops in March, March 13th, I believe. Uh, which is going to be uh, basically Los Angeles. They're adding Los Angeles. So they're adding to the southwestern part of the map. They're adding like almost a a whole another half the map, which is gonna be massive. Uh, which I don't know how that's gonna work, but because I have San Francisco right now, but San Francisco is quite small. So if LA and and technically going by going by that, San Francisco is just about the size of LA. So um, I'm oh, curious yeah, to see. Okay. I'm curious to see. So when's it dropping? Uh, February twenty first. Okay, nice. Oh, so, yeah, so basically around the exact same day that Horizon Forbidden West dropped last year. Actually, it dropped the 18th of February. But, um, yeah, that that's going to be great. The I'm I'm super excited for the DLC of uh, <clears throat> Horizon Forbidden West. And this, and this DLC is also going to tie into whether or not they're going to just completely add another DLC to Forbidden West about... Um, so, so, the theory is, right... That they're going to drop this kind of... This is not going to be like a full DLC. This is just like an expansion, you know? Like a tiny little expansion to the uh, to the world. And then there's going to be a little bit of story built into it with some new characters and stuff to set up the next game. And the theory is that if they don't drop it in Forbidden West, the next game is going to be the Forbidden West map, okay? So entirely. Like, you're not going to have to explore like you did in the first game. And then it's also going to be the first horizon zero dawn map as one giant map okay for when for when uh when they can do that with technology because right now they're kind of limited because the map is so big like both of the maps are just about as big as each other so you put those two together and you kind of make like a eso like elder scrolls online you know where it's just like a bunch of the parts of all the elder scrolls games just tied into one giant fucking just battleground right but but it's going to basically be about the so I I'm not gonna spoil the ending of Forbidden West but there is um a thing that's that's happening that needs to be stopped or needs to be dealt with and I think the third game can honestly be you don't even need to worry about the exploring or anything like that I think you're just gonna have this entire just massive battle that's what it's gonna be which is why I think it would be better if it was just a DLC for Forbidden West because I don't think they really need a whole new game I think if they just drop like a thirty dollar DLC because the because the LA expansion, like the the Los Angeles expansion in the southwestern part of the map, is gonna be free. It's gonna be completely free. Like you don't have to pay for it. 
So, like, in Horizon Zero Dawn, I don't know... You never had to deal with this, okay? But, um... So, so the PC version automatically comes with the Frozen... The Frozen Wilds. So, Raven, you've played all the Hor- for, or for uh, Horizon Zero Dawn, right? No, no, I, I, I didn't. Okay. I didn't. So, so in the northeastern part of that map, there is a... Um, there's this place called the Frozen Wilds, and it adds, it's basically like Yellowstone. Like, it's a Frozen over Yellowstone, and you get to see a bunch of the geysers, and there's all these really intensely hard enemies there, and there's a bunch of crazy combat. That's built into the PC version of the game. But the PS4 version of the game, you had to buy it. And there was a lot of backlash about it because it wasn't really worth too much money because it was only like two hours of content. So um, there's a lot of backlash. So they're making this one free. And it's and it's a really big expansion or it's a decent size expansion. But no, I'm hoping they um I'm hoping they they get on top of this. Also, <clears throat> God of War TV show will be dropping at the end of the year, too. God, I hope they don't mess it up. Yeah, they they haven't announced who the who's who's going to play anybody yet, but um. I'm sure they'll find some pretty good actors. Sony's always really good about their IP. Um, speaking about Sony Unless IPs, it's Ghostbusters. Oh fuck, fucking Ghostbusters, bro. Hey, they made up for that. They made up for that. They did. Afterlife was pretty cool. Afterlife like, was fucking fire, dude. It was fire. I actually liked that. I I considered it like one big epilogue. I did. And I, was I did like, too. I, I I was like, that's good. I grew up. My family is a bunch of old heads. And so Ghostbusters was our go-to shit, like 80s and 90s movies. I can recite a bunch of the most popular 80s and 90s movies because that's all we I watched with my fucking family because they're all a bunch of old fucking geezers. Yeah, everybody in my family is really old except for my dad. My dad and my mom are super young, but everybody else in my family is super old. Like all my aunts and uncles, they're all in their like 50s and, and then the rest of them are in their 60s. My grandpa's in his 70s or about to be in his 70s here. But my dad is literally like 38. Like, my dad is super young. My dad had me when he was, like, 18. My dad and my mom were both 18 when I was born. Actually, my mom was 17. She wasn't even 18 yet. She was about to turn 18. So, <clears throat> but yeah, so, I, Ghostbusters was the shit. And honestly, Afterlife was pretty cool. Yeah, I loved it. I I, I looked at the trailer, and I was all like, oh, man, this is i'm not so sure about this and then like i watched it and i was all like damn okay i didn't fuck i didn't fuck with ghostbusters 2016 no nobody did nobody should (laughs) nobody should (laughs) oh man but yeah so sony's pretty good with their ips so speaking on sony ips the last of us now okay you said it was gonna be dog shit and, um, well, I don't like Pedro Pascal as the role. I don't think he really fits the role. And that weird-eyed girl who kind of looks like they couldn't quite get Millie Bobby Brown to play the role. Um, yeah, she looks like a lizard. Yeah, the lizard girl. Um, the, the casting choice is kind of odd. However, it is a very, very faithful adaptation of The Last of Us. Which brings in a problem for me. Is... Since it's such a faithful adaptation, I don't care because I've already, I already know the entire story of Last of Us. So if they're following the game scene for scene, that's great for new audiences. That's great, you know, that's great. But for every for everybody who's played the game, you're not going to get anything new from the Last of Us. It's it's almost word for word. There's there's scenes and words that are like word for word exactly how it was in in the in the sh- in the game. And honestly, the Joel scenes, Pedro doesn't do a bad job, but it's just not worth it. I mean, I'm happy that they're staying faithful to, I mean, it has the screenwriter that did Chernobyl, right? Yeah. So, and I didn't know that at first. So if I, if I would have known that I would have been like, oh, well then it will be good. But for me, it's how can you be so faithful to the games and its story yet cast people who one don't look like the characters from the games and two they just look off it's like i can't stare at this chick who plays ellie she's fucking ugly i don't care if she was in game of thrones yeah and i think i i I think it it, you know what i don't care that it exists it's the same as like the last of us remaster for the ps5 you know it's cool at first like you know it's like oh that's fucking stupid they don't need to do that but you know what it's cool that it exists. It's whatever. I, I, for people who really want to enjoy it, who haven't 
because I, I I'm thinking in okay for me the problem is I get way too personal with it like I think like oh I played The Last of Us in 2014 on the PS4 or or yeah on the PS4 I, I don't need to fucking worry about this game I've already played it why would I want to why the hell do they need a 2022 revamp of it but then I remembered that there are still people who own PS5s that that are were too young to play the game then and maybe want to enjoy the story and same thing for moviegoers there's some TV show and moviegoers like for example my friend uh. My my friend Eva, she's uh she's probably like twenty one now, yeah, about that age. She um she is not a video game person, but she's been really enjoying The Last of Us. And she goes, honestly, she goes, This is a great story. And then I remember that's exactly who it's for. It's exactly for people who don't play video games and and still want a good story. And I mean, that's exactly you gotta you just gotta sometimes with movies and TV shows, you gotta really take yourself out of your shoes and think about who it's for. Because it's like, if you're going to watch Bubble Guppies and be like, this show's fucking ass. It's like, well, it's not made for you. You're 36, dude. It's like, this show's made for a four-year-old. <laughs> like, like, bro. <laughs> mm. Un- unironically, though, Bubble Guppies is kind of fire. That show, it's, it's literally a children's show, like, for babies, but it's, it's super funny. That's kind of how Puss in Boots was. I was like, oh, this is going to be trash because, I, 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 you know, Shrek was good, but ever, everything kind of since Shrek 1 and 2 has just been kind of mediocre. No, dude, they fucking, dude, they went all out for Puss in Boots. Oh, my God, dude, that movie was so good. I, I figured it was going to be shitty animation, shitty story, just to, you know, sit your kids down and have them look at something for two hours. Nah, dude, it wasn't made for kids, bro. I mean, maybe it's made for kids, but it's kind of like regular show and all those old Cartoon Network and Nickelodeon shows, bro. Like, it was made for kids, but god damn is it really enjoyable at any age. Like, yeah. um, wh- what was that show? Dude, like, Chowder? I couldn't handle that show. That fucking Cartoon Network show from the early 2000s? God, that show was oh trash. My gosh. But, like, yeah. Hey Arnold? Hey Arnold, like, bro, I don't know what happened to, to like, TV, like, like, kid shows. Like, kid shows used to be so good. And then, you know, we had that dry period in the 2000s where it was all trash. And then all of a sudden, Cartoon Network just came, just was banger after banger after banger, bro. Like, literally, we had regular show, fucking Adventure Time. Dude, oh my god, dude. The, it, it, the Amazing World of Gumball, dude. Holy shit, dude. It, it was some of, like, the greatest television I'd probably ever watched. And and it's, well, it's meant for kids. It's literally meant for kids. But, like, I still go back and I watch regular show. Because regular show is, like... It's got so many, it's because it's got so many, like, like, references to young adults, like, like, only, like, like, when you watch as a kid, you'd be like, ah, but then when you watch it as, like, as, like, a, as, like, an, like, an adult, you're like, damn, that's kind of, like, there's some good life advice in here, bro. Like, don't be like Mordecai, mm-hmm. don't be like Rigby, don't be lazy fucking boning slackers, dude. And, yeah. Although, regular show goes off the rails, like, first, first 30 seconds of the show, it starts out with them raking leaves, and then it ends with a fucking space battle, and it's like, what the f- how did we get here in 15 minutes <laughs> in 15 minutes we just we, we just flipped the script i think that's what it, i think that's what it made it enjoyable though it was just so whacking goofy oh man yeah hey arnold was great yeah i also used I to also, watch no go ahead go ahead i also miss jimmy neutron Ooh, can't handle the neutron style mm-hmm. <laughs> God, that not, uh, God, the fucking, that that episode's pretty far. Then there was a. Did you know there was a spinoff of Jimmy Neutron? No. Yeah, it's called um. What what's that? What's that? Uh, is Sheen? It was like Planet Sheen or something like that. And y- there was like it's like a monkey. It's like a space monkey, like uh, like the Xbox Live gamer tag uh like profile picture monkey smoking the cigar, and then it's Sheen on like this alien planet. And they're trying to figure out how they can get back to Earth. And the monkey's like super intelligent, and Sheen's like a dumbass and messes everything up. Yeah, it was it kind of sucked. It was nowhere near as good as Jimmy Neutron. But dude, Jimmy Neutron, like the the story is so good, but like the the animation does not hold up anymore, dude. I tried to watch that, I was like, damn, sad. That th- those old three D animations, they struggle nowadays. But it was cool as a kid. It was really cool as a kid. Um, did you ever watch any Disney 
channel shows when you were younger? Like the Sweet oh, Life yeah. of Zack and Cody? Oh, yeah, dude, I had that. I remember when they were first starting to release episodes like a week early on uh, Disney.com. Oh, before Dis- way before Disney Plus. <laughs> way before Disney Plus. Yeah, I remember that Disney actually had a section you could go to where like, oh, did you miss the premiere of the new episode or you can't make it? Like they would sometimes they were like wacky about it. There were some times where they would actually upload the new episodes like a week before they premiered on the TV or they would post them like way later down the road for you to watch them if you missed them. And it's like they were never consistent about it. But man, did I did I love watching do that Zach with Cartoon Cook. Network? CartoonNetwork.com in like 2011, 2000, yeah, about like 2011 was so fucking wacky, dude. Like, there is a show called Lego Ninjago. You may have heard of it, maybe not, but it's basically, it's exactly what you expect. Yeah, Yeah, it's just Lego ninjas, okay? And I remember, like, everybody was trying to figure out who the green ninja was going to be because there was this, like, green ninja that everybody kept seeing in visions and stuff like that, and there was a prophecy of him. And, um, the green ninja turns out to be like this little kid, but the episode, like they, they decided to premiere it on cartoon network.com like uh, a couple days before. So like, I, I, I was like, mom, please, please. So we went on our old, cause back then, like I wasn't a PC nerd or anything like that. And neither were my parents. Cause we had like a fucking dial up shitty ass computer. So um, we had shitty internet, shitty computer. And I remember on this shitty fucking Dell, probably windows XP, fucking or probably windows vista actually windows vista pc fucking going on there taking 30 minutes for internet explorer to load and then got to cartoon network.com and i watched it i remember i was just so happy i was so happy and then there used to be these like interactive games that you could do for the shows so like regular show had this uh had this one where you had to like uh there's a very first episode of regular show where there's like this stuffed like wrestle wrestling like wrestler doll and they have to put the 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 ham on him or something like that or like i think he wants me to put the herd on him i can't remember what it was but like you basically have to throw rigby off of a off of this tiny little trampoline and see if you could fucking like pummel this uh this wrestling doll it was so it's so fucking i don't know why dude it was so good that shit was fucking fire also there used to be this show on cartoon network um where they'd have to like make the shapes of the walls and like and if they didn't do it correctly, they'd, like, get pushed back. Or if they did it correctly, they'd, like, go through it. It was kind of cool. I remember I, I the first time I saw that show, I watched it at my at my grandpa's house, who lives in near Seattle. And I remember I was peeing in, in his toilet, and, like, it splashed up and hit the wall, and he went in there, and he got mad, and he, like, made me, like, clean his entire bathroom when I was, like, six years old. <laughs> I did that I pissed on his wall. I was like, bro, I didn't piss on your wall. Dude. <laughs> so he made me fucking clean his entire bathroom. I was like, damn, dude. Damn. that That's pretty based, pissing on people's walls. <laughs> I didn't piss on his fucking wall, dude. It's okay. We'll keep it between us. Yeah. <sighs> But no, the sad news. <clears throat> week of sadness. Week um, of sadness. Sad week in Minnesota. Minnesota is um dying. No. Uh Minnesota Damn. based. Honestly, it's actually a pretty good week in Minnesota because they just got the uh bill through the house for the legalizing of uh marijuana and cannabis to people over the ages of twenty one. So that'll be good. But other than that, it was a pretty sad week. Um, big loss for the Minnesota Vikings this weekend. It was very upsetting and heartbreaking to watch. So um, this year we had probably one of our most stacked, like best teams probably in the past like 30 years. Maybe, honestly, the only one that would come close is our 2009 team, maybe. and. Um, so we were really stacked, and we got eliminated week one of the playoffs, which is very heartbreaking. And um, a lot of people are very upset, and not just uh, not just sports fans, but a lot of people are upset because of the fact that this was gonna be such like a major year for us, and we just got swept. 
our quarterback, who's basically the guy who like throws the football, controls everything, he threw a really stupid pass on our final down, uh, and ended the game basically on a really shitty play, and then um, we had basically no defense at all. Our our defensive coordinator, uh, actually had the fourth grade fucking Minneapolis fucking middle schoolers show up for defense, and so uh, he got fired. He's gone. But yeah, it was just a it's just a really sad week. Um also I had to double up a bunch of classes uh before my semester got over, so I um I was very depressed this week because I had to work all day plus in or or all night and then basically all day fucking school class. But now yeah. I'm done. Semester's over new semester starts and it is going to be way more laid back. Basically all my classes are online now. So I basically, um, I sit at home, I do my work and then I just enjoy my life for a couple months anyways. Damn that you sound like it, that big ass yawn. Yeah. I didn't get to bed until, um, until like, 1 a.m. last night, and then I was gonna go to the gym last night, but I lost my fucking key card to go get into the gym. So this morning I had to pay like ten bucks to get a new one. That's kind of ass. That's kind of lame, but yeah. Also, dude, there was this dude at fucking work. Um, this lady, actually not a dude, it was a lady. She fucking called, and she was like screaming at me through the phone, and our manager wasn't there, so I had to deal with it. And like, I was about to just tell her to go fuck herself, man. Honestly. I was this close. It was, it was so, cause like, it, we're really busy, right? Yesterday, let me just say, we had one of our busiest nights we've had in a while because there was a, a high school basketball game in, in, in town, like a massive high school basketball team, like game. And so basically I was fucking, I, I'm doing my weight, you know, every fucking table's pretty much full. People are still mm-hmm. coming in after every table's full and old ladies like, wow, there's so many people here. Um, I can't believe we can't get a spot. I'm like, what do you want me to do, dude? Like, I, you want me to just tell somebody who's eating to just get the fuck out? I can't, I can't do that. So, I basically had to solo it uh, with the help of uh, this other guy, Mason, who works. He's pretty fire. He took a bunch of the bigger tables, and I just kind of did all the other smaller stuff. And we we walked away with okay money for tips. I only got, like, 58 bucks compared to... Usually the last night it was packed like that, I earned like $120 in tips. So it was kind of, it was just a mediocre night. And then this fucking lady just to top it off, fucking screaming at me through the phone. She calls, goes, um, we got the wrong sauce with our, with our wings. And I was like, oh, I'm sorry, ma'am. Um, what, what sauce were you supposed to have? She goes, well, the sauce was supposed to be on the wings. I was like, let me look. Did you order on slice? Which is slice is like our online thing. Like they, they, so I can see like whenever they order stuff online. And, and so it it specifically said on the online order to put the sauce on the side. And I said, oh, ma'am, it says right here. It says put the sauce on the side. She goes, um, what? And I was like, yeah. And she goes, no, I said to put it on the wings. And I said, no, ma'am, it says right here. And she goes, are you questioning me? And I'm like, well, ma'am, it says right here that it says put sauce on the side. She goes, I was talking about ranch dressing. And so then I was like, I kind of got a little angry. And, and the guy in the back was like, all right, all right, you know, whatever. And and then finally, I was like, well, ma'am, if you said ranch, then you should have said, I want ranch on the side, not sauce on the side. And she goes, I want to speak to your manager. I said, I am the manager because our manager wasn't there. So I was like, fuck it. I said, I am the manager. And she goes, well, I'll have you know that this is very unprofessional and rude and I'm never ordering from here again. I said, okay, bye. <laughs> yeah, see, I... I... Yeah, see, I am terrible on the phone with customer service. Yeah, so I, I, I didn't want to deal with it. I don't care if you, it, I, if you're gonna, I, I don't have patience for people like that. And if you're gonna be gonna make a big kahoot about your own mistake, that's your fault. I actually yeah. had something like that similar happen a couple weeks ago. It wasn't the same lady, but lady called and said that her sauce was on the side, and it's like. Well, you said put sauce on the side. Well, no, I meant ranch dressing. Okay, then say put ranch on the side. When you say put sauce on the side, that immediately thinks that the sauce that you want on the wings is going to be on the side now. Or at least put, if you said dressings, I could understand if you even said put dressing on the side, because then I could assume that it's ranch. But when you say sauce, I don't know what I'm supposed to think when I'm writing it down. 
Mm -hmm. So, like, I, I don't know. I think I think you're just fucking just bag it. I have a I have a funny story of me doing customer service. Oh, really? Sure. Oh yeah, it's not as good as yours. See, you you were remaining professional. I I wasn't professional from the start because I'm just terrible with people on phones, and I'm terrible with phones in general. So in the back where we do a lot of our stuff, such as putting orders together and taking them out, and where you we bring back all the stuff for people's orders, there's a phone on the wall. And when it rings, you're supposed to answer it, or at least the person in charge, not the manager, but like the person in charge of the back room at that moment for prepping orders is supposed to answer it. Well, they weren't there at the moment because there was a big rush of cars coming. And I was just like, I'm not answering that. And I was told, no, you have to learn, pick up the phone. I literally pick up the phone and I literally just go, yeah. I don't I don't give a I don't give a yeah, you know, this is this is Walmart online grocery yeah. pickup. I'm just, I'm just like, yeah. <laughs> and then you had this dude, okay? He was already annoyed by me based off of how I answered the phone. And he's like, "Okay, I'm here to call about something that happened with my de with my grocery delivery." And now here's the thing. I didn't have an attitude. Okay? I didn't. I just I forget that you can't reply to people the same way that you do normally in the normal life. So he's all like, "I have a problem that I want to discuss about my order." I'm like, "Okay, what about it?" Just just just, <laughs> just yeah. yeah. Like okay. that, that's that's literally like how genuine like if you're all like if you come up to me and you're all like, yo, I got a problem about something. I'll just be like, OK, what about it? Because it's like you got to tell me about it. OK, what about it? And well, I say that to him and he's like, wow, well, aren't you peachy? <laughs> and I'm all like, I'm like, I'm, and then I'm like, OK, sorry. I'm like, sorry, sir. I don't mean to sound that way. Can, can you tell me what happened wrong? And then he started changing his story through the whole thing. First, it's he got somebody else's items. Then it was he got the right he got his order but he got stuff that he didn't order with it and then it came down to this dude literally forgot to check the button to not allow substitutions for certain items <laughs> and that there was like one item apparently for it that didn't get dropped off and it got put into a separate order and he was wondering when that would be delivered and i'm like okay sir one second so i'm like i go over to the computer where you can see the same thing like you said with um with being able to to see in the program what somebody ordered and who delivered it and it showed here that there's literally only one order for it placed and so i asked him i said sir does it say that it's being delivered by us the same day grocery deliverers or is it saying that it'll be shipped to you because sometimes with walmart if you order an item that isn't in stock and you don't find look at the cart when you're checking out it'll basically be something that's shipped to you and he started going off and i was all like sir if you have a problem i can give you the 1-800 number for the customer care because we can't or we don't issue refunds on our side you have to call them and then he starts going oh i hate you fucking people you retarded incompetent pieces of shit i hate getting groceries from you you never get anything right and in the middle of his rant i was like okay cool and i hung up <laughs> See, that's literally job... what i said i was just like okay cool so i do i do uh waiting and so my job is basically i run all of upfront uh so like i do that i do phones and i basically have to manage that usually with another person on like weekend days but during the week it's usually one person so like there's always these people that come in that they're they're an a they're aa their group right the alcoholics anonymous and they all come in there's like eight of them and you know usually that's not too bad and, and they're usually pretty nice and they tip really well but this week for some reason they were just so obnoxious so we have a salad bar right where like you can just you know, all you can eat salad bar for five bucks i know dude insane okay although all of our prices are going up now um because we were losing a lot of money because our prices had been the same for like the past like 15 years <laughs> so they're finally going up but um so they, they come in and he's like, I'm going to get a salad bar. He goes, oh, by the way, do you have any pickled herring on the salad bar? I was like, what the fuck? I said, pickled no, we don't herring. Have yeah, I said, no, we don't have any pickled herring on the salad bar. And he goes, um, oh, he goes, yeah, you guys used to have pickled herring on the salad bar. I said, oh, really? I go, I've worked here for like a year and a half. We didn't have it back then. 
He goes, oh, no, no, no. This was like 1979. I was like, why the fuck do you think we'd have Pickle Harry? That was over 40 years ago. <laughs> like, literally over 40 years ago, dude. Oh, my God, dude. I, 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 I was like, yeah, no, we probably haven't had pickled herring since the 80s then. He goes, oh, that's a shame. He goes, the salad bar used to be so good. Like, that was 40 fucking years ago, dude. Well, you still have pepperoni pizza, don't you? <laughs> you, you see, look, if I can get a pepperoni on pizza, why can't I get shrimp? That was what they used to exactly. say. And, and, and now we have shrimp on the menu and nobody orders it, bro. Literally. People used to call and complain that we didn't have shrimp, and then once we got shrimp and announced it, now, like, nobody orders shrimp. I swear to God, people just complain to complain. Or, like, oh, yeah, we didn't have gluten-free, like, like 20 years ago, Our the pizza place didn't have gluten-free. And people would call and complain, oh, I can't eat here because there's no gluten-free. So we finally got gluten-free on the menu, and I swear it only gets ordered, like, maybe once a month. Um, isn't and, it great? And, yeah, and it's expensive as hell, dude. Supply and demand, baby. Uh, I want gluten free, and I want to be catered to for my dumb health needs. Then you Honestly, finally get it. No, you know what? Gluten free is fire. I like our gluten free crust. It's because it's not really raised or anything like that, and it's nice. But nobody orders it. Like, see, that's the, that's it. the point I was getting to is that they want you to cater to whatever their needs are, and then the moment you do, they just go on to the next place that doesn't have it to complain there. It's just annoying, dude. Like, oh. Although yesterday we actually, so my friend, my friend Tommy, uh, his name's Thomas actually, but we just call him Tommy. Uh, he's gluten free, and him and his family come in, and and they they don't normally come in a lot, but they decided to come in, and they all got gluten free because they're all gluten intolerant. And my friend Tommy's actually like like allergic, like like he can't really hardly even be around like uh any type of flour, gluten, anything like that without like you know just having major major problems so they came in and so we got like four pizzas of gluten free yesterday so that that was big but yeah that that's basically who it's for which you know i don't i guess i don't mind it but like you just gotta you know i just i hate those people that fucking complain that we don't have something and then like once we get it i never will ever hear from them again you know i don't know it's like great but, thanks for complaining or like or like we 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 changed our delivery fee to three dollars. It used to be two dollars for like the last like ten years. It was two dollars. We changed it to three dollars because um you know it it just doesn't really make any sense to have a delivery fee be two dollars when the delivery fee won't even charge any like won't even get close to charging for the car because we have a delivery car. We don't use our own cars for delivery. And so this guy right get this, <clears throat> it wasn't even the price. Okay. He's like, hey, do you think uh, I could get a pizza f to, be, uh, to be delivered to my house? I was like, yeah, absolutely. So I take down his address. I put on, uh, he, he goes, can I get it for 7.15? And it was like 6 o'clock. And I was like, sure, okay. And so he was like, <clears throat> uh, okay, I'm going to get this large, you know, house pizza, which our house pizza is every item on the menu except for uh, tomatoes, bacon bits, and shrimp, okay? And then all the other sauces, of course, okay? And all the all dumb weird stuff like lettuce and stuff like that. So all the base like 10 toppings is on the house. So it's like a $23 pizza. It's a super expensive pizza. And so he orders that and then orders another house, but a smaller size, which was like about $20. So it ends up being 43, like 43 plus tax. So then about $46 and plus nine are the three. So then $49 for two pizzas. Okay. Two. But by the way, these are two massive pizzas that have almost every single ingredient on our menu. Okay, so they're really expensive, and, uh -huh. and and he goes fifty dollars for pizza. He goes, I remember back in nineteen ninety eight when I would order a house pizza for uh nine ninety nine. I was like, oh, I'm sorry, sir, but I was thinking in my head. I said nineteen ninety eight. Think about how long ago that was. Okay, I get time flies, but think about how long ago that was. Okay, it did not cost you. Okay, it it did not cost you three dollars and nineteen cents for gas. Okay. It didn't cost you um, $10 for a bag of pepperonis. It only cost you a dollar for a bag of pepperonis. Okay? It, it, prices are different. Prices, yeah, of course they're going to go up. But you got to remember that, that the money, basically, everybody still makes the same amount of money. It's just a different number. That's what you got to remember. 
Everybody that says like inflation is bad, inflation is only bad when you don't keep up with inflation. Okay? The 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 price can be whatever the fuck it wants, but as long as you're making money to support it, okay? I don't care if I was making $100 an hour as long as everything else is you know worth is that much too. If if gas is $100 a gallon, that's good as long as I'm making $200 an hour. You know? Mm-hmm. It doesn't matter. And and also, by the way, all these people like my grandpa, I don't want to I don't want to, you know, be a, be a douchebag. But when he's like, oh, you make so much money making $15 an hour. I remember I was working for two sixty nine in 1968. I was like, two sixty nine in 1968, Grandpa, is, was like $19 an hour in today's money. You were making more money in 1968 than I was making today. Okay? Yeah. I don't want to hear it. I don't want to hear it. I don't want to fucking hear it. God, I hate that shit, man. That shit pisses me off. Entitled little brats. <laughs> fucking making so much money. You're making less money than you did when you were my age. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. The world we live in. Those are also the people that also fucked over our country and our world, too. Our entire world's fucked because of them. They ruined everything. Fuck the boomers. So sad. <sighs> hey, man, they elected Nixon. That's all I gotta say. Nixon was based. Nixon was very based, dude. The first time he ever got caught for, like, money thing, he goes, yes, I stole money. I stole $30 to get my daughter a puppy. And everybody's like, oh, how sweet. He's such a good guy. And then Watergate. <laughs> and then I was like, whoa. Well, it's funny, dude. Here's the funniest part. I love talking U.S. history and politics about this shit. Nixon would have won that election no matter what. He didn't need to try and rig votes or try to get try to do any, like, scandalous shit. Okay. Mm-hmm. He would have won that election no matter what. Watergate did not need to happen <laughs> at all. He was projected to win that election by like a landslide until Watergate. Yeah, he Yeah, he won every state. Yeah, he um he was a dumbass. Just way too yeah, paranoid. He, did, did, did you did you see did you have you heard the recording of him talking about Bohemian Grove? No. Do you know what Bohemian Grove is? Um, it sounds familiar. Is that the, um, owl statue thing? No. Oh, that's something. Bohemian Grove uh, was a place where, um, it still might be a place that, I don't know. It's been uncovered for a while now. Uh, at Bohemian Grove was a place where basically all of your politicians and elite would go to hang out once a year for ritualistic type shit. And, um, Nixon was talking on a, re- a on a recording about how he gets invited to that place every single year, but he doesn't go because it's filled with nothing but a bunch of homos, and that he does he just doesn't <laughs> want to be there. A and bunch a, of homos, he said. That? He well, okay. He said he used a different word, but okay, I don't think Spotify will. He used the other f word for homos. Oh. Yeah, and he was all like, and he said something else about it. I'll, I'm gonna butcher the hell out of it. I don't, I don't want to butcher the hell out of it. But he said some really funny things about why he hates going to Bohemian Grove. But essentially, it's where like the elites pick the next president or whatever. And it was always said like, "Oh, this place doesn't exist. It doesn't exist. This doesn't exist." Until one person actually went in there uninvited, um, and literally just recorded everything that they do there. And it was hilarious as hell because it's like, oh yeah, here's all the, they're all together right over here. Turns out they were uh, just having a just having a nice steak dinner. Yeah, you know, somebody recorded them, and I think it was 1999 they were recorded, and it was before the election there, where, you know, they they were they had some weird crap going on there. Like I could show you the video. Uh, one of them is where like they sacrificed a child effigy to a giant owl statue. What the. Like it's it's all real too, and it pissed off everybody because when he had recorded everything, um, and then he would approach the senators who were there and leaders about it, like he would just walk up to them after they come out of the Congress or whatever building they might be in. He was all like, "Hey, do you ever go to Bohemian Grove?" And the 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 one senator, I forget what his name was, that he approached, and he the senator was just all like, "No, I don't have no idea what you're talking about." And he literally was like, "Oh, are you sure? Because I recorded you being there." Didn't you like that show uh, that didn't you like the display going on? And immediately the senator doesn't even deny it. He's all like, you weren't supposed to be recording. That's against the rules. How dare you? It'd be a shame if you're uh, 
<clears throat> if your gasoline tank blew up uh, in your gas yeah. car. It's like the funniest. That's why it was hilarious to see Nixon. So I was all like, I was all like, damn, did really did Nixon really do all this shady stuff or did like they set him up because like he just roasted the hell out of them in a recording for what they do at Bohemian Grove? I mean, either way, Nixon was a paranoid. I don't I don't think he was schizophrenic, but he was paranoid as hell. They they made a joke about that in uh, Call of Duty in Black Ops 1, uh, the Zombies Map 5 where it's uh, Fidel Castro and JFK meeting about um, Cuban Missile Crisis, and Nixon's there, and, like, uh, there's, like, a knock on the door, and Nixon just goes, Sounds like somebody's breaking in! And, and Kennedy's like, It's just a storm, Dick. Sit down. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, honestly, if you if you saw everything the CIA did in the 1960s, I'm, pr- oh, I'm pretty dude, sure if I this- became a president, I'd be paranoid as shit, too. Dude, the CIA used to be... Dude, I mean, even the, the shit the CIA was doing in the early 2000s, late early 2000s, is, was still shady. I mean, everything the CIA does is shady, but it's because you don't know what they're doing. I mean, supposedly they got rid of that entire fucking network where they could basically spy on anybody at any single time, but they oh, yeah. quote-unquote got rid of it, but how are you supposed to know if they still have it running or not? You can't go check. Exactly. Yeah. You know what's funny is the old James Bond movies with Sean Connery and stuff. Yeah. Was that the the uh, it was either the screenwriter or a director, I forget which one. So don't I don't know which one it is. Had said that he got most of the ideas for the James Bond movies from actual people in the CIA that were like, yeah, we do this we actually do this all the time. We actually have vehicles retrofitted with guns like this. This is normal for us. And they actually got the ideas for some of the plots for the movies or things that the CIA has actually done in real life with shady stuff. I think working for the CIA would be kind of based. Like, I don't think I'd want to, but I think it'd be so, like, cool to just, like, know what the fuck they were doing. Because, like, some of the shit they do, like, because you don't know what they're, you don't know what they're doing. But I feel like some of that shit, like, that secret, like, spy shit to me is so dope. Like, the FBI is lame, right? Because the FBI is only, like investigating in the united states the cia bro they're worldwide they they will do oh, yeah. they they got operatives fucking everywhere you don't even know it hell i could but be dude, a cia agent for all you know raven yeah it, i would have detected that already <laughs> you got a little detector got a little meter oh yeah i have you know it's all fun and games being a cia agent until you learn a little too much and then they need to get rid of you yeah like, and, then, and then you need the, to be disposed and then the next moment you know you have no control over your car and you're accelerating until it explodes. <laughs> Dude, have you ever watched a video of um, the first ever remote-controlled vehicle from the early 1910s? So around the time that uh, it was around like 1919. Actually, it wouldn't be early 1910s. It'd be late 1910s. Like 1919, right? Okay. So right after right after World War One, this guy, he had this, uh, I think it was a Ford. It was like a... It was kind of it was kind of similar to the whatever the popular Model T or whatever it was that was really popular back then. And basically, he fitted it with this like st- remote steering wheel thing that he could use like fr- sitting down, and he could drive it up to like a mile in a block, right? And everybody was like, "Wow, wow, this is so cool! This is so cool!" Until the fucking thing broke and it crashed into somebody, and I think it killed them or like something happened. And then ever since then, nobody fucked with that shit for like 60, 70 years. And so had that not happened, though, we probably would have had like not I wouldn't say drones, but like more remote controlled stuff, you know, like uh, stuff like that way sooner than we did because we didn't get a bunch of that stuff till the 80s and 90s. Right. Like the bunch of the drones and, and a bunch of that stuff. Hell, drones are more recent than the cars and stuff like that. But like we didn't get those until like the 60s, 70s, 80s, 90s, that that time period. But we could have had it way earlier because there was the, it was known. It was just it, 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 it's kind of like nuclear energy. Everybody's like um, most of the world doesn't use it because, you know, Chernobyl happened and they're like, nope, not going to happen. Not going to fuck with it. But honestly, I mean, other than having to bury that waste, it's a very clean energy. It you is. Know, like, it actually is a very clean energy. I mean, the nuclear waste. And here's the thing. I mean, I, I'm not trying to say like because this this sounds like a really stupid like human leech. Because, you know, it just proves the point that, like, we just use all of our environment around us to benefit ourselves. But, I mean, that's what we do as a species. If you really want to get rid of the nuclear waste, 
send that shit into space, throw it into the sun. I mean, I mean, the nuclear waste, as long as you detox it, it's not going to create any chemical reaction big enough for the fucking sun to blow up or anything like that. Or just fucking send no. it to another planet or something like that. You know, blow it up somewhere uh, on a planet. I think, I think no. there's way easier alternatives to, to, than burying the waste. And, and this guy at work was trying to tell me, well, you know, nuclear energy is really scary. You know about Chernobyl. I was like, oh, yeah. You mean when they ran a test that they knew was going to blow up, but they did it anyways? Yeah. Have you have you seen the Chernobyl TV series? Yeah. Yeah. That's it's exactly only, what I told him. Yeah. Like they they literally were improperly um, um, running the facility. The typical Russians. They were they were literally improperly running. It was because of them putting in the rods slowly when they shouldn't have that it caused the the big meltdowns that it did like they used faulty parts that were cheap as well for something that required delicate use and it literally it, it's what caused the whole meltdown obviously we're more competent and we know better than that uh, it, and i'm sure we could actually use the waste to make batteries yeah we could do something like that too we could use the waste for other beneficial things as long as it gets decontaminated and, and I agree. We have a big furnace in the sky. Send it to the sun. Yeah, I mean, literally, you know, you, you gotta work. You gotta work smarter, not harder. And you gotta. I, I think. I think if you want to evolve as a as a as a species, you gotta take those risks. Because we this, were we we were we were going on a really good track. I mean, had Chernobyl not happened, we would have probably been using pretty much all nuclear energy by by the twenty twenties, pretty much. But but that one thing happened, and then everybody got scared. Everybody got paranoid. Not gonna happen. Not my son. Not gonna happen. And now and now fucking now we have these fucking bullshit alternatives. Like you know you can use the sun as energy, and it's like yeah that works, but it works on such a small scale. You know if you just used you know nuclear energy like we were going to, you could use it on a way higher scale, much safer, much cleaner, and it's way larger. Because like solar energy, you can only use solar energy. In, on a small scale base i mean yeah it's awesome on like on on spacecraft and stuff like that where it gets like 100 percent sunlight okay and yes we can trap we can trap a bunch of the sunlight for when it's dark out too but you can basically only run a house on like 10 solar panels like you need 10 solar panels to run a singular house you yeah. need one nuclear plant to run like a whole entire city and maybe even more yeah, solar panels are not only more harmful for the environment. Environment too. They are very and they're harmful fragile for the as they're, they're fragile. fragile. They're fragile. They're harmful for the, the environment, and they only last like 15, 20 years. And when they do, you gotta you gotta get rid of them, and you can't. And it's hard to get rid of them properly. And they end up, and a lot of them, like especially in the countries where we're giving them to, like where we're building solar panels and sending them like South America, places like that, they're just they're just throwing it into nature, and it's ruining their forests and and and, and their it's it's basically worse than the plastic in the ocean, basically, because you're you're not mm -hmm. just hurting uh, animals in the ocean like sea turtles stuff like that. You're hurting land animals and you're hurting humans because of it. Like sea turtles, look, we don't hardly eat. I, we probably don't. Maybe a humans probably eat, eaten a sea turtle before, but we don't eat sea turtles. We eat land animals, okay? And you don't want their fucking. You don't want them going away and dying out. Our main source of food, okay? Especially down there where they don't really do a lot of farming on large scales like we do in the U.S. They kind of need those. They kind of need those wildlife to produce and populate. I just think I just think if we were smarter, uh, who was it? The Jimmy Carter, Jimmy Carter, you know him. He I mean, yeah. he was kind of a goofball, but he had the idea of uh, way radical at the time. It, it would have been about the around. I think it was right after Nixon. Really radical right before Reagan. And he was had these ideas for all these nuclear power plants, all these ideas for all this stuff. And everybody's like, oh, no, that is way too stupid. That's never going to work. And now you look back at some of the stuff he was wanting to do. And it was like, hey, that was actually really smart, man. We should have listened to that guy. But, you know, nobody listened to him. The brightest minds, the brightest minds get shunned the most. I know. So sad. The stuff you do to me in chat, man. Oh, dude, I go off on you in chat, dude. I hate you. I'm mm -hmm. your biggest op. Dude, did you see the ops got Stuart Little? <laughs> yes. Stuart Little found dead in Chicago. Yeah, so that's what set off my trap. Stuart Little. Poor Stuart Little. Oh, man.
Um, damn, I was just, I was reflecting on, on my life, you know, like, like every person does at, in the middle of the night, and I was like, damn, dude, 2017 was like, it was like six years ago, <laughs> like, I remember January 2017, I was watching, I, I was, in, not even in high school yet, watching fucking Mini Lad, of all people, watching Mini Lad play golf at, with the Van Ness crew, and I, I was like, damn, dude. I remember exactly what I was doing. And I remember how nice it was. It was so chill. It was great. Sad. Man, time flies, huh? Yeah, time flies. Well, anything else you gotta add? Any new topics? Any news? Anything crazy? No, no, not really. That You kind of ah! covered a lot of it. Nice. Uh, we haven't heard anything from James Gunn. Um, so DCU is on a hold, but at the moment I think it's probably dead. I mean, we'll see how Shazam, The Fury of the Gods, and Aquaman 2 does this year, but I think they're both going to be good movies, but I don't know if, um, yeah, I don't know. Here's what's going to happen. Either those movies completely flop because that whole universe is now dead now and won't be continued out and everybody's going to be like, what's the point? Or they're going to be so successful and garner many reviews of people going, this is what we always wanted. And then like DC is going to be like, oh, maybe we should rethink this. Yeah. I think, I think that's probably why James Gunn is waiting because he wants to see how people feel about that. I mean, black Adam should have said everything. People want Superman. People want Superman. Mm -hmm. Dwayne Johnson wants Superman. Everybody wanted Superman. That should have been his main key of, okay, keep Henry Cavill in here. And I think that's just, I think it's dumb. I think that's dumb. But yeah, it's, it's going to be, it's going to be, it's going to be rough. I'm really excited for the Mario movie too. And as goofy as Ant-Man and the Wasp was the 2018, this new one looks pretty fire. I just I I like the uh that sci-fi esque to it. It's really dope because the the problem with Ant Man and the Wasp the the that movie and Ant Man. I mean Ant Man was pretty good. Ant Man and the Wasp though was so mediocre because like nothing happened. It's such a bland movie, and this actually looks like something's gonna happen. As it, at least you know what I'll give this to Marvel. Okay, at least they're finally going in a direction and they know where they want to go. For the past three fucking years, three and a half years. They have no idea where they've wanted to go with this goddamn universe. They have been going in fucking circles, fucking sideways, fucking arrows, fucking any fucking shape or line you could possibly imagine they've been going into. They just did not have a straight path, okay? Anything but straight. They had everything but going in and knowing exactly what they wanted to do. And we got some bangers, but pretty much for the most part, it was all cheeks. It all sucked, pretty much. It was what we got spider-man and shang chi that was pretty much about it yeah everything else was very mediocre at best so um yeah also dude no news have you noticed no new star wars movies they announced way back in 2019 around the time of the rise of skywalker that they were going to do a uh uh a star wars trilogy during the uh during the the high republic so, like, when Yoda would have been, like, 300, 400 years old, you know? Like, that time mm -hmm. period. So, like, really, really dope, like, Jedi are doing shit. You know, Jedi are the, are the men. Jedi are the men and women doing shit. Um, and well, I've heard no news on that. They just, they did last year announce that they're still working on it, but um, nothing. So, maybe we'll get, maybe we'll get an announcement for that this year. But Hopefully, and I hope it's good. Yeah. Well, dude, the High Republic... The, the games that take place during the old republic and the high republic and all that are really good and all the comics too so i mean they got a lot of good material to work off so it's really hard to make something bad as something that's so good but then again they did that with the with the sequel trilogy so um yeah but now they know what to not do and now what they now they know what they need to do too so uh with that yeah. guys i think it's time to end hour and 10 minutes that's good um as always, thank you guys for watching. You made it all the way to the end. Yeah, you're a beast. You're you're nuts. You're insane. Uh, and yeah, I guess uh, we'll see you later. Question mark. Question mark. All right. Bye.